Hi everyone, welcome back. I hope you're all doing well. I hope you've all had a better two weeks than me. If any of you didn't see my community post from last week, I got tonsillitis. You can probably still hear it in my voice right now. I still don't feel 100%, but I've got to film this video. I cannot take another week off, but please just bear with me in this video. I'm probably going to lose my voice, but thank you so much for being patient with me because, oh my God, I've had tonsillitis before, but nothing like what I just had. It felt like I had tonsillitis and flu all rolled into one and it completely knocked me off my feet. I have never experienced anything like that. I have been on the sofa, unable to basically move and do anything for like a week. So we are here, finally. This video was supposed to go up two weeks weeks ago, but better late than never. And today we are covering a case that, oh my God, makes me so angry. Like to my core, this case, I have been getting so angry. Even though I've been on the sofa, I've still been working and I've been getting so angry. Today we are covering the case of Shonda van der Ark. And I've been getting a lot of requests to cover this case because it has just recently been in trial. And I did watch some of the trial as it was going on. <coughs> I'm sorry, it's <coughs> so frustrating, this case, this whole thing. It makes me so, so angry. And Shonda, there is a special place waiting for her. Because back in May of 2021, Shonda had her 15-year-old son, Timothy, who was incredibly vulnerable. He moved in with her. He had various disabilities and he had previously been living with his dad for 10 years. And then he moved in with his mom, Shonda, which was possibly the worst decision, the worst thing to ever happen. Because as soon as Timothy moved in with his mom, he was subjected to some of the most inhumane treatment imaginable. <laughs> He's really skinny. He's really skinny and I didn't notice till this morning. Cause and I just don't know how anyone can treat a child the way Shonda treated her own son. And then the final punishment that Timothy would have to endure has now unfortunately become very infamous to this case. And that is Shonda's use of hot sauce. But what makes this even worse is that Shonda didn't act alone. She enlisted the help of one of her other sons, 19 year old Paul, to help with the mistreatment of Timothy. We made sure that it was still something that gave him enough calories and everything. It was rice or bread and like I said last week, he got pizza. And I'm just like, what the hell? That just makes this even worse. And then the worst thing imaginable happened in July of 2022. Off the top at 11, a horrific accusation of child abuse. And then recently over the last like three months or so, it has been in trial and the sentencing has happened and everything. And it's just so heartbreaking this case. So prepare yourselves, you're going to get angry. Like, oh my God, my blood boils with this woman. So let's just jump in. I just want to give a huge thank you to today's sponsor. And that is Audible. So you guys know Know how much I love listening to mystery and thrillers. I've told you all about my Thursday murder club obsession in the past. Well, recently I have been listening to None of This Is True by Lisa Jewell and oh my God, it is so, so good. The story is centered around two women, 45 year old successful podcaster, Alex, who has everything going for her in life and 45 year old housewife, Josie. And one day Josie and Alex just randomly bump into one another in a pub. And this is when Alex decides that she wants Josie to be the subject of her next podcast. And from this point forward, we go on a long, crazy, twisted journey. Josie is not exactly what she seems. Mm -hmm. She just worms her way into Alex's life and loads of dark secrets get revealed. But then just as quickly as Josie arrives, she suddenly disappears, leaving a terrifying legacy in her wake. And it soon becomes clear that Alex has become the subject of her own true crime podcast. And I am not going to say any more than that. I will not give you any spoilers, but you guys need to go and listen to this audiobook. I know you're all going to love it because if you love true crime podcasts and if you love mystery and thriller novels, it is basically the two merged into one and it will leave you on the edge of your seat. And Audible is the best place to go to to listen to whatever you're interested in. Whether that is the best-selling audiobooks in every genre, exclusive 
exclusive Audible Originals, popular podcasts, and their mystery and thriller section is incredible. And if you guys wanted to check this out, new members can try Audible for free by going to audible.com forward slash Danielle or by texting Danielle to 500 500. Again, that is audible.com forward slash Danielle or text Danielle to 500 500. I will leave that link in the description box down below and using that link really does help out this channel. And then you can go and start listening to None of This Is True right away. And I promise you, you will not regret it. So I just want to thank Audible again for sponsoring today's video, but thank you to every single one of you guys watching right now. And I really mean that because without all of you guys, I wouldn't get opportunities like this. And now let's jump into our case today. Not gonna lie guys, I am feeling rough. So apologies if I'm not completely with it in today's video, but yeah, just just, just bear with me, please. Shonda van der Ark was born on the 15th of September, 1979, making her a Virgo. And she grew up in the city of Huntsville, Alabama, where she lived with her parents and then her three siblings. Now, Shonda did not have a very good start in life at all. No, it was dysfunctional, it was chaotic, and it was abusive. There are many any rumors that from a very young age, Shonda was the victim of physical and sexual abuse. But I couldn't 100% confirm it, but there are rumors and to be honest, I, I believe them. And it seems from my research that Shonda's parents split up when Shonda was still very young and Shonda was just raised by her mom. And then something else that has been reported and I just found this so shocking, like I could not believe this, but when Shonda was only only six years old. Her mom, who was called Mildred, I forgot to say that. Her mom, Mildred, tried to murder her grandmother. I know. What the actual hell? I couldn't believe it. Like when I found out that, I was like, what? Mildred apparently spent $25,000 hiring a hitman. She ordered the murder of her own mother. And she did this so that she could inherit two million dollars inheritance but the attempt failed and there was an investigation that lasted like three years and i'm pretty sure she went to prison like i'm pretty sure couldn't confirm it though but i just found this article from like the 80s that said that she was released from prison at some point so she must have gone to prison but i don't know for how long i don't know what she was charged with clearly attempted murder or hiring a hit whatever so then because mildred was clearly being investigated and went to prison it seems shonda and one of her siblings, who was her sister Paige, they got put into foster care. And I assume the other siblings also got placed into foster care, but I just couldn't find any information about those. So I only have information about Shonda and Paige. And when the two of them are placed in foster care, both of them received terrible physical abuse. When Shonda was between the ages of six and nine, she was physically abused every single day. And it consisted of her being beaten with clothes hangers and ping pong um, paddle boards. Shonda was also forced to take ice baths. And this is very significant, so I remember that. Her diet was also restricted. She was starved on some occasions. Again, this is very significant, so pay attention to this. And quite often, Shonda would only be allowed a few bites of bread here and there. It's just crazy the amount of similarities between the treatment that Shonda goes through as a child and then what she then subjects to her own children. It's deja vu. And this treatment of Shonda, it lasted the whole time she was in foster care. And then eventually Shonda's mom, Mildred, was released from prison. So then Shonda then went back to live with her mom, Mildred. And Mildred had found a new man and uh, he was very creepy. The kind of things that this man goes on to do makes you want to throw up. However, at some point, I actually don't know what age she was, but Mildred passed away. I don't quite know how old Shonda was. She may have still been a child. She may have entered her teenage years, but her mom passed away, leaving Shonda now in the sole custody of her creepy stepdad. And this is when Shonda is now sexually abused. So there was rumors that Shonda was physically and sexually abused as a young child, like a baby before foster 
foster care. She was then physically abused in foster care. And now she's also being sexually abused by her stepdad. And it's just like, wow, it just goes from bad to worse for Shonda and her childhood. So Shonda's stepdad immediately put Shonda on birth control so he could have what he has described as a sexual relationship with her. Shonda's sister Paige was also in the house. I'm not sure if she was also subjected to abuse. I'm, I, I don't know. But when Shonda is being sexually abused, this is when Paige has described Shonda as, quote, a very self-entitled, controlling, and possible sociopathic person, which is pretty extreme words if you ask me to describe someone that is being sexually abused. Like, I, I can't quite wrap my head around that because it's like she's being sexually abused by her stepdad. Those seem pretty harsh words, but they're her words. Obviously, she did live with her sister. However, I can understand why Paige thinks like that because Shonda was not nice to her at all. What Shonda goes on to do to Paige is unforgivable because Paige, when she was just a teenager, she entered into a sexual relationship with another teenager and Paige fell pregnant. And Shonda was so angry that her sister had fallen pregnant before her. And I'm like, what? Like, like what, you're all teenagers. Like no one should be getting pregnant. But it seems, this is my interpretation anyway, Shonda was angry that she hadn't gotten pregnant by her stepdad. And she was angry that Paige was now pregnant before her. And I just, I don't even wanna wrap my head around that. It's just messed up on so many levels. So because Shonda was so angry that her sister had fallen pregnant before her, when Paige reached 16 weeks of her pregnancy, Shonda intentionally punched and beat her stomach causing Paige to miscarry. And that is why I said I can understand why Paige thinks horrible, harsh words about her sister because that is unforgivable. However, it nearly happened again because a few years down the line, Paige fell pregnant again and Shonda tried to do the same thing again. She tried to beat her sister into miscarrying. Thankfully, it didn't work the second time. Paige went on to give birth. She had a healthy baby, but I'm just like, oh my God. Shonda is clearly not a good person. Like, I know she has gone through so much abuse and nobody should go through that kind of abuse that Shonda has been through, but like, why are you taking it out on your sister? And from that point going forward, Paige essentially cut off her sister. She never spoke to Shonda again, and to be honest, I don't blame her. Shonda should not not be allowed around children ever. Like the warning signs were there. So to say that Shonda had a traumatic, chaotic childhood would be an understatement, but I think it's also clear that Shonda from a very young age is also not a nice person. So we now get to Shonda approaching her 20s. To be honest, I don't know how things wrapped up with her stepdad, but she is clearly no longer in a abusive relationship. I was gonna say sexual relationship, but it's abusive. She's clearly no longer in that relationship. She actually meets a man called Eric Ferguson and they settle down and they soon go on to have four children, which I'm like, bloody hell. Birth control people, some people should not have children. So when Shonda is 20 years old, she gives birth to her first child, who is a son that she calls Nolan. Then at 22, she gives birth to her second child, another son called Paul, who is a very significant person in today's case. Following this, at the age of 24, Shonda gave birth to a daughter who she called Millie, before giving birth to her youngest son, who was Timothy, when Shonda was 26 years old. Now, does Shonda settle down and become like a good parent, like have a family life? No, no, of course she doesn't because Shonda is evil, the definition of evil. She doesn't like children, but she was so neglectful. She never wanted to look after her children. They were just a burden to her. She never showed them love, attention, affection. She was never caring. She doesn't have a caring bone in her body. Her four children have never known love. From the moment they entered this world, they have never seen it, never felt it from her. Instead of looking after her children, she would apparently sit on the sofa all day and write what she has described as sex books. And and then she would show her so-called sex books to her children and read out her sex books to her children. In these sex books, it described all of Shonda's sexual fantasies and fetishes. And I'm just like, why do you have to show your children? You can write whatever you want. What possesses somebody to write down their sexual fetishes and then think, hmm, I'm going to show my children this. What is she getting out of that? And then it was also around this time when her youngest son, 
Timothy was diagnosed with a variety of different conditions. And Shonda just didn't have the patience to deal with his disabilities, his conditions. She didn't want to know. And unfortunately, Timothy is the main victim of today's case. And Timothy was diagnosed with autism, ADHD, bipolar disorder, speech impairment, motor impairment, and sensory processing disorder. And I think he was diagnosed with some other things, but I couldn't quite figure it out. But just know that Timothy, he struggled with a variety of issues. It made him look at the world differently. He had trouble concentrating. He had trouble communicating. He couldn't understand simple concepts that most children his age don't even think twice about. He also had a problem with being touched. He didn't like it. He didn't quite know how to talk to people sometimes. He reacted very badly to loud noises. And the kind of care that Timothy needed would be different to a child without these conditions. But Shonda didn't want to deal with him. No, no, it's too much hard work. And she just left Timothy to his own devices, which is not going to help him at all. It's actually just going to make him worse. And Shonda would just sit her ass on the sofa, writing her little sex books. And the only monitoring she would do of her son, Timothy, is that she set up cameras around the house to just watch him, just to make sure that he didn't, I don't know, hurt himself. And remember these video cameras. Oh yes, this is very, very significant to today's case. However, Shonda wasn't just neglectful as a parent. It is also thought that she was abusive to her children as well. I mean, of course she is. I'm sorry, her showing her sex books and reading out her sexual fetishes to her children. I'm sorry, but that's sexual abuse. But it is thought between the years 2009 and 2012, this is when Timothy was aged three to six. This is when CPS carried out a three-year investigation into Shonda because there were so many reports of abuse in the household. There were lots of accusations of abuse in the household and most of the accusations were of sexual abuse. Apparently she brought pornography into the home and showed her children, which I 100% believe. And apparently there was also inappropriate sexual contact between two of her children. And I'm like, really? Where did they learn that? Were they encouraged to do that? Children don't do that on their own devices, you know? And CPS, thankfully, took these accusations very, very seriously because in 2012, after they had finished their investigation, they recommended that Shonda's parental rights be terminated completely, which meant that she had to give up custody of all four of her children, move out of the family home. So now her four children have been left with her husband, Eric. Shonda and Eric soon get a divorce after she moves out. Shonda was ordered to pay child support and she was only allowed to spend three hours a week with her children under supervision. And Shonda was devastated about this. And to be honest, I don't know why, because she doesn't like children. But she was so devastated about the fact that she lost parental custody of her children, that she was no longer allowed to live in the house, that she begged her now ex-husband, Eric, to impregnate her again so she could have another baby that she could keep secret that no one could take off her. I'm sorry, this woman is deranged. Thankfully, Eric said, no. Shonda quickly lost contact with her children because like I've said many times already, she doesn't care about her children. And it would now be many years until she would have contact with her children again. So now we need to talk about the children living with their father, Eric. And uh, let's just say he's not a good parent either because Eric found a new partner, Trisha, who had two children of her own. So Trisha and her two children move into the household with Eric and the four children. So there is now eight people people in this house and it is so chaotic. And remember, Timothy has been diagnosed with various conditions. And again, still, even though Shonda has moved out, no one is taking care of him. No one is giving him the care, the attention that he needs. No one is taking him to the doctors regularly. He's not taking his medication regularly. Eric or the new stepmom, Trisha, have no interest in taking care of any of the children really, but especially Timothy, who would need more care. And Timothy would now be completely neglected. And he was going to school and his school teachers noticed that he was clearly being neglected, possibly abused at home. He would come into school and he would be filthy. He would smell really bad. It was very clear that he was not taking showers. He was not having his clothes washed. And he would look so filthy and smell so bad that the teachers would allow Timothy to take showers at school. And they would also wash his clothes for him at the school because it clearly wasn't being done 
done for him at home. And during the fifth grade, Timothy still hadn't developed bladder control, which meant that he had a lot of accidents. I don't know if that has something to do with any of the conditions that he had, but again, this was something else that his dad, Eric, and his stepmom, Trisha, had no interest in addressing at all. And something else that the teachers always noticed is that Timothy was always hungry. They were genuinely worried that Timothy wasn't being fed when he was at home. So teachers would give Timothy food. They gave him as much food as they possibly could. They would fill up his backpack so that Timothy would at least have something to eat when he went home. But something that is just so heartbreaking that the teachers noticed that Timothy was clearly starved of attention. Timothy became very attached to the teachers at his school. He was always asking for attention, hugs. He just seemed really attached to his teachers. He was really eager to please them. He wanted to perform well at school. He wanted praise. He wanted just any kind of attention. And it just breaks my heart that Timothy is turning to his teachers for just any kind of affection. And Timothy would constantly be apologizing to the teachers. He would be very emotional. And the teachers at his school believed that he was emotionally stunted because of the lack of care and attention that he received at home. But then teachers also became aware that there were allegations that Timothy's older brother, Paul, was sexually abusing him. Paul is a very significant person in today's case. And oh my God, these are obviously just allegations. We don't know for certain if it happened, but I'm just like, oh my God, these children, what are they going through at home? Now, of course, when the teachers became aware of these allegations, they immediately got in contact with the parents. So Eric and the stepmom, Trisha. But every time the teachers approached Eric about everything that was going on in that house, what Timothy was going through, Eric and Trisha would just be full of excuses. Timothy's stepmom would actually say, oh, Timothy likes to wear dirty clothes. He has a shower every night and he goes to bed clean and he just so happens to wake up dirty. So Timothy, it's very clear that he is being neglected, possibly abused, possibly sexually abused by his older brother. But then Timothy is not the only child being abused in that household. Paul is also being physically abused by his dad. And now obviously Paul is the one that there is possible allegations of sexual abuse to Timothy, but Paul is also not having it easy in that home. Paul has said that his dad, Eric, would physically abuse him pretty much on a daily basis. Eric would spank Paul with a belt, leaving bruises on his backside. He would also force Paul to do wall sits, which is obviously doing like a sitting in a chair against a wall, but without a chair. Paul would be forced to do these wall sits all the time whilst holding like cans of something or bottles just to add like extra weight to make it even worse. Paul would quite often struggle to even walk the next day because of how much pain he was in. And as soon as the teachers did pretty much have confirmation that both Timothy and Paul were being abused in the home, they went straight to DHS. They reported reported the abuse to the right authorities. They made follow-up calls constantly trying to get something done, but nothing was ever done. So that is what the children, but Timothy and Paul, that is what they are going through right now. But what is Shonda doing? Well, Shonda has just moved on with her life. She met a man online called Adam van der Ark. They fell for one another very quickly. The two of them soon go on to get married. They also have a son together. And I'm like, oh my God, birth control. And the son that they had is only known as G in this case. His identity has been protected. So Shonda is now raising a child again, which is obviously not going to end well. But Shonda felt like her life was finally on the right track. And unbelievably, this is something else that I find completely shocking about this case. But when Shonda is 36 years old, Shonda goes on to get a place at law school. She first attends Liberty University, where she got a bachelor's degree in paralegal studies. And then in 2018, she went on to get herself a place at at Western Michigan University's Cooley Law School. And she was given a scholarship for her place at law school. Like 100% of her tuition was covered. And she was only one of seven students to receive this. However, let's just say that it doesn't really seem like Shonda is any different because her fellow students, they didn't like her. They said that she was a bully. She was very arrogant. She had very controversial and strong political and religious views that angered a lot of people. However, Shonda 
Yolanda is extremely intelligent and she became a star student and she graduated with honors. I think she graduated second in her class. And I'm like, what the hell? So she has her law degree. Then she goes on and passes the bar. And I'm like, what the hell? I mean, that is not easy. To graduate with honors, second in her class, now she's gone on to pass the bar. She has done so well to achieve that. And then after Shonda passed the bar, she soon got a job working as a law clerk for a couple of uh, circuit judges. And her job was just to kind of shadow them and conduct legal research. She had a very good job. And at this point in time, she was living with her now husband, Adam. They had their son, G, who was approximately five or six years old. However, it is now the point in the case where Shonda reconnects with two of her previous children from her previous relationship, Timothy and Paul. And this would soon end up with terrible consequences. And this all started back in 2020. Shonda's now 18 year old son, Paul, calls her out of the blue and says to his mom that his dad is kicking him out of the house. And apparently Paul was being kicked out of his dad's house because Paul wasn't paying him enough rent. And Shonda hadn't heard from any of her children for years. So this was a complete shock for her. But Paul needed somewhere to stay and he wanted to reconnect with his mom. So he obviously phoned his mom and said, hey, can I come and live with you? I have nowhere to live. And Shonda immediately says, yes. Paul moves in with his mom. He settles in and everything for a short period of time is somewhat okay. However, then we get to May of 2021 and another very significant thing would happen. And that would be because Shonda's other son, Timothy, would also move in with her. So Shonda received a phone call from their dad, Eric, saying that he could no longer deal with Timothy anymore. Like Timothy was a pain in his ass. He was just so annoying. He was difficult to deal with. Timothy would always push his dad's buttons and that he was sending Timothy to live with Shonda because he just didn't want to deal with it anymore. And again, Shonda happily agreed to allow Timothy to live with her. I mean, Paul was already living with her and he was going great. They obviously have their other son, G, living with them. So it's like, yeah, the more the merrier. So May 2021, there is now five people living in this household. We have Shonda, we have her new husband, Adam, we have their joint child, G, and now we also have Paul and Timothy. However, now this is where everything would go downhill because if you remember, Shonda had to give up her parental rights to her children. So Paul and Timothy are living with their mom illegally. They're not allowed to be there. She's not allowed to be their guardian. Well, Paul is 18. So even though he's not technically allowed to live with his mom, he's 18. He's an adult and it doesn't really affect him. However, Timothy is still a child. And the fact that Shonda cannot legally be his guardian has huge ramifications. For starters, Shonda couldn't act on Timothy's behalf for anything because she wasn't his legal guardian. She wasn't allowed to do anything, which included Timothy going to school. Shonda, because she's not his legal guardian, she couldn't register Timothy in the local school. So now Timothy is unable to go to school and school for Timothy was a safe haven. It was the only time that he ever got love, attention, food, a shower. And now that has been taken away from him. But also Timothy couldn't go and see a doctor which means that he could never go to the doctors about any of his conditions. He wasn't getting medication, which meant that when eventually the medication ran out, he couldn't get any more. Timothy is essentially off the grid. Like he doesn't exist in that household because he's not allowed to exist. So obviously that's going to cause a lot of problems. It's going to be very distressing for Timothy. He has no medication. He has no school. He has no safe haven. But then to make matters even worse is that Timothy and Paul, they had to share a bedroom. Now, the problem with this is that Paul despised Timothy. Now, obviously we know that there were allegations of Paul sexually abusing Timothy. So we've obviously got all of that, but Paul despised his brother. He told his mom that Timothy was a troublemaker, that he was no good, that he was always just a nuisance, that Timothy always broke his belongings, got in the way. Paul would also say that Timothy was incredibly lazy. And he had this really annoying habit that Timothy was so lazy that he would never go to the bathroom to urinate. So instead, Timothy would just get up in his bedroom and urinate anywhere, like in the closet, on the floor, making the whole bedroom smell. Paul also believed that some of Timothy's conditions, his disabilities were made up. 
He was just doing all of this. He was just a troublemaker. He just wants attention. But Timothy was also a danger to be around because Timothy would always mess with the bolts and the screws on Paul's bed, making it incredibly unsafe for Paul to even go to sleep. Timothy would apparently also tamper with and unscrew the electrical outlets in the wall. Again, being a danger to himself and others. Timothy would apparently pull light fixtures off of the wall, rip the wallpaper off the wall, scratch the pane, just destroy everything basically. So all in all, Timothy is a really bad child. He is a nightmare, he's a nuisance, he's a liar, and he's a danger to himself, but everyone in the house. Now these are just Paul's words, Paul's accusations. We actually do not have any evidence that Timothy did any of what I've just said. However, Paul just kept saying all of these things over and over again in his mom, Shonda's ear. And Shonda believed Paul. And Shonda decided that Timothy must be punished. He's a troublemaker. He's causing all of these problems and he needs to be punished for it. But Shonda turned into a strict disciplinarian. She would always be sending Timothy to his room for long periods of time for punishment. And when I say long periods of time, I mean hours. Because Timothy had to, quote, reflect on his actions. She always treated Timothy differently to her other two sons that were living in the house, Paul and G. And I have to think, was it because of his disabilities and his conditions making Timothy more vulnerable than the other two? However, even though the treatment of Timothy is absolutely abhorrent, fortunately for Timothy, his stepdad, Adam, was living in the house. And Shonda was worried about what her husband would think if she punished Timothy too harshly. So even though Timothy is still being treated disgustingly, Shonda is controlling herself. However, all of that will change because in January of 2022, which is eight months after Timothy first moved in with the family, Adam suffered a severe major stroke. Adam was now no longer able to care for himself. He needed 24 hour complete care. Adam pretty much could not do anything for himself anymore, which meant that Adam moved out of the house. Adam went to live with his parents who lived in Florida. And I forgot to actually say, but the family are currently living in Norton Shores, Michigan. So Adam is moving from Michigan to Florida. So now Adam moves out of the home, leaving Shonda, Paul, Timothy, and then the other child, G, in the house on their own. So I bet you can imagine now what happens because now Adam has gone. He was the only thing that was essentially protecting Timothy from the extreme punishments, but now Adam's gone. And I have to warn you all now, the treatment of Timothy becomes extreme. It's so disturbing and it's really hard to listen to because now Adam has moved out. It's January, 2022. And according to Shonda, I just want to stress that according to Shonda, as soon as Adam moved out, this is when Timothy started to act out even more. And this is when Timothy started to steal a ton of food and he was overeating. He was eating every single thing that he could get his hands on. Every time his mom wasn't looking, he would be going into the pantry, going into the fridge and eating absolutely everything. And I just want to stress, we have no evidence of this. This is all according to Shonda. However, Shonda seemed to use this as justification to starve her son. So she placed locks on all of the kitchen cupboards, on the pantry, on the fridge, on the freezer, because she needed to keep Timothy out of the kitchen cupboards, out of the fridge, because he was eating everything. He was overeating. And she needed to starve her son for a few days at a time to teach him a lesson. And I mean starve her son. She would not allow Timothy to eat a single piece of food for days at a time. So Timothy started to lose a ton of weight. He became completely malnourished, but that wasn't the only punishment that Timothy received. Shonda also forbid Timothy from ever leaving the house. Not that he ever left the house that much anyway, but he was now never allowed to leave the house. The only time he was allowed to leave the house was when he was walking the dog 
in the backyard. And the backyard of their house, it was completely like covered. So no neighbors could see into the backyard. Nobody in the outside world even knew that he was there. And of course, in the beginning, Shonda had to homeschool Timothy because he wasn't allowed to go to school because she didn't have legal guardianship over him. So Shonda in the beginning was homeschooling him. However, now that stopped, even though her homeschooling was not really homeschooling anyway, but at least it was something. Timothy was given some activities to do every day, some textbooks to read and just something. And even that was better than nothing because now Timothy was left to do nothing all day. He had no mental stimulation. He had no books. He was not allowed access to the internet, no TV. And even though we have no evidence that Timothy was out of control, that he did destroy things, that he was a nightmare. When you think about it, can you blame him if he was? He literally has nothing to do. Maybe he did act out. Maybe he was just desperate for attention. But Timothy was so isolated, so lonely. He had no friends. His brother Paul absolutely hates him. He never went to a doctor. He was not on medication. He was being starved. But if that wasn't bad enough, he now started to receive physical punishments. And these physical punishments would involve extreme exercise. One of Shonda's favorite exercises was to force Timothy to run up and down the stairs, up and down, up and down, over and over again in the house and also the stairs in the backyard. She would also force Timothy to do wall sits. And he would be forced to do these wall sits for hours at a time. His muscles would be burning, shaking. Timothy would be crippled in pain. And you also have to factor in that he's not eating either. He has no energy to even do these extreme exercises. And then Shonda decided to take Timothy's bedroom away from him. And as I'm sat here saying all of this, it feels like I'm filming eight passengers again. Like these are literally the same things that happened in that case. So Shonda did didn't trust Timothy to have the freedom of his own bedroom because he was such a nuisance, that he was a danger, that he was unscrewing the outlets and he was unscrewing the bed and oh my God, he's such a danger. And I'm just like, I don't believe it. So anyway, Shonda has taken Timothy's bedroom off of him and she instead decides to lock him in a small closet. That was his new bedroom, a small tiny closet. And initially she did place a mattress in the closet because you know, she's such a good mom. She allows her son to sleep on a mattress. And every single night, Timothy, when he went to bed, he would have to go into this small closet and sleep on the mattress. And obviously all of this so far is a lot and it's all escalated so quickly. That's why I said that Adam was the only thing protecting Timothy essentially from all of this because as soon as Adam moved out and moved in with his parents, Shonda essentially rubbed her hands together and thought, right, now I can start abusing my children again. And I say again, because don't forget she has already abused her children before and that is exactly why they were taken off of her. And why is she doing this? We don't know. The only justification that Shonda has given is that Timothy was a troublemaker and he needed to be punished. Timothy is suffering every single minute of every single day. However, there was one problem for Shonda. She had a full-time job. Remember, she is a law clerk and she works at a local courthouse. She has a nine to five job. And who is going to torture and abuse her son whilst she is at work? Well, this is now when Shonda recruits her other son, Paul, to participate in the abuse. And luckily for Shonda, Paul also has a job. He is a dishwasher at Applebee's, but Paul works nights and Shonda works in the day. So this works out perfectly because whilst Shonda is at work, Paul can abuse Timothy. And then when Paul goes to work, Shonda can abuse Timothy. Oh, that just works out perfectly. So Paul is currently 19 years old and he didn't really have much going on in his life right now. Literally, the only thing that he did was go to work at Applebee's on the evening. Throughout the day, he was just at home. He didn't really have any friends himself. He actually did have a YouTube channel and a TikTok account where he would post videos on Minecraft. Yo, 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 what up? It's P Fergie plays here and today i'm starting a new youtube we are going to be building 
Lego sets. And the videos that he would post, you actually can see Timothy appear in some of these videos, which is just so sad. Other than that, like he didn't have a social life. People have actually just described him as a bully, but he has been described as someone that would enjoy inflicting pain on others, especially his brother, Timothy. But now Paul has something to do with his time and that was abuse his younger brother. So from this point going forward, whenever Shonda was at work, she would instruct Paul to now abuse Timothy and Paul happily obliged. From my research, Paul was a willing participant. He was not forced or coerced into this abuse. As far as I'm aware, there was no threat of abuse to him if he didn't carry out the abuse on his younger brother. Paul has also said himself that he enjoyed the power and control that he had over his younger brother. Now, we have to remember that Paul has been abused himself by his dad for a lot of his life. We have to also remember that there was possible sexual abuse going on as well when Paul was younger from Shonda. So we cannot ignore the fact that Paul has also suffered his whole life. And I'm not making excuses for Paul at all. No, 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 no. Do not get it twisted. I am not doing that. I'm just saying we do have to acknowledge that Paul hasn't had it easy either. And Paul has probably got a lot of issues and he's probably incredibly messed up from from his own childhood, it still is not an excuse for what he's about to do. Paul, he's 19. He knows that what he's doing is wrong and he still went along with it. So now that Shonda has Paul as her little henchman, was this enough for Shonda? Oh no, 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 because she wanted to take the power and control to another level. So this is when Shonda implemented a whole monitoring and CCTV system in their own house. So she could track and monitor Timothy every minute of every day. She placed cameras all over the home, in every single corner, in every single room, in the hallway, the living room, the kitchen, the bedrooms, the little tiny closet that Timothy now had to sleep in. Every single room had a camera and they were ring-like cameras, so they could be hooked up to Shonda's phone. So when Shonda was at work, she had her phone, and she was literally watching her son, Timothy, on her phone. She was watching Paul abuse Timothy on her phone. So even though Shonda, she's at work, she's supposed to be working, she was actually just looking at her phone all day. This turned into pretty much a second full-time job for her. She would just be watching her phone all day. And if there was anything that she didn't like, she would speak into her phone through the two-way communication system of the cameras and she would instruct Paul on how he should punish Timothy. Now, I'm sorry, can we just pause for a moment there? And this is bad enough as it is, but is it just me? But she's doing this in a courthouse. Her job is a law clerk and she is in a courthouse every single day. I don't know why, it just makes it worse for me. It's like you work in law enforcement, like in that kind of environment, in that system. And she's literally monitoring her sons who she is abusing. And she's also instructing her other son to abuse her other son whilst she's at work in a courthouse. She would say things in her phone like, oh, I can see that Timothy is in the kitchen looking for food. Lock him in the closet. Oh, Timothy seems to be relaxing too much. Make him run up and down the stairs for an hour. And again, I just want to stress this, that Shonda was sat at her job, at her desk in the courthouse, and she would be speaking these instructions into her phone and her colleagues around her could hear her. One of her colleagues has come forward and said that she would quite often hear Shonda speaking into her phone, saying things like, no, you can't leave your room. No, you can't have more food. You've already had what's provided to you. And I'm just sat here in complete shock. I'm like, hello, you literally work in an environment where you come across evil monsters, disgusting people every day. Yet you have one sat among you. Why are none of you doing anything? Oh my God, I literally want to scream. And Shonda, she wasn't hiding the fact that she didn't like her son, Timothy. She would talk to her colleagues about her problem child. She never used his name. No, 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 no. She would always talk to her colleagues that she had a problem child, that he needed to be punished. He was such a nuisance. He was a nightmare. And her colleagues never knew Timothy's name. 
They just knew him as the problem child. She just wants to completely dehumanize Timothy by not even saying his name. And Shonda would also openly tell her colleagues the punishments that she would enforce. She would say that she would not allow Timothy to sleep all night. She would sleep deprive him. She would tell her colleagues that she shut Timothy outside all night in the freezing cold. We are talking about Michigan here in the winter. She literally went into excruciating detail about her punishments to her problem child in a courthouse and no one did anything. And I'm just like, wow, there is no hope in this world, is there? I can't believe it. I mean, maybe some people did report her. Maybe some people did actually try and stop this. And even if they did, nothing was ever done. And these punishments went on for months, but they just got more extreme like they always do. More and more cameras were fitted around the house. However, now there was also sensors around the house. I mean, obviously she did have some ring cameras which do alert your phone when there is movement. So she already had those, but now she's actually got sensors, like actual sensors. And she puts these sensors on Timothy. She would put a belt on Timothy and the belt would have sensors in them. So she would be alerted every single time Timothy would even move. There were sensors fitted into Timothy's little closet. So every time he moved in the closet, this really loud alarm would go off. Now, if you remember, Timothy would react very badly to loud noises. It would really scare him. So again, Shonda knew this and I can guarantee you she did this on purpose, making this really loud alarm go off every time he moved in that closet. This caused a huge amount of distress for Timothy every single time it went off. Timothy's hands were also bound. Sensors were fitted on that as well. New punishments were being added. Shonda would sometimes now force Timothy to kneel in the corner of his little closet with his hands tied behind his head and he would be forced to kneel for hours on end. There would be other times where Shonda or Shonda instructing Paul would now drag Timothy out of his closet, make him stand with his face squished against the wall and he would be forced to stand there all night without sleep and forcing someone to stand, to kneel for hours on end would have caused immense pain and discomfort. And of course he has these sensors on him. So if he ever moved, Shonda would know. And if he ever did move, Shonda or Shonda instructing Paul would inflict a worse punishment. But it didn't stop there. Shonda now started to restrict Timothy's usage of the bathroom. He was only allowed to use the bathroom for one minute to urinate and two minutes for pooping. And if he ever took longer than that, Paul would be instructed to literally grab his brother off the toilet, didn't matter what he was doing, and just drag him out of the bathroom. And this led to Timothy having even more problems with bladder control, which meant that he was now having even more accidents. Currently, Timothy sleeps on a mattress in his closet, but because he is now having more accidents, there was one night when Timothy wet the bed and Shonda was so angry that she decided to take the mattress away from Timothy. Instead, she now placed a blue piece of tarp on the floor for Timothy to sleep on. And it's like, wow, she's really just taking everything away from Timothy. The one piece of comfort that he had, which was a mattress, that has now been taken away from him. But also Timothy was now no longer trusted to wear clothes. You had that right. Shonda would place Timothy in an adult diaper because he was having so many accidents and nothing else. So Timothy was wearing an adult diaper and nothing else, like no other clothes because he wasn't trusted to wear clothes because he was having accidents. And I really cannot believe that I'm saying all of this. Like, how can you treat a child like this? And over the next few months, the punishments just got more extreme, more frequent. And Shonda and Paul the whole time were communicating about all of the abuse and the mistreatment neglect over text messages, leaving a long trail of digital evidence behind them. In March of 2022, Paul texted his mom, Shonda, about Timothy's hand ties, the zip ties around his wrists, saying that they were too tight. But Shonda messaged back saying that she didn't care. There was another string of messages about restricting food. In another text message, Shonda said to Paul, quote, 
Please make sure you go downstairs regularly to make sure Timothy is not asleep before you leave for work. Maybe we should leave the light on. That way it will be harder for him to fall asleep. Feel free to dump some cold water on him. I honestly don't care if you get a little rough with him. And I feel like, again, I just want to pause for a second there. She is talking about her son, her 15 year old son. There were more messages that Shonda forced Timothy to clean out the garage completely naked just to humiliate him. In April of 2022, there were more messages. Paul said to Shonda that Timothy was going through the trash, just going through anything, trying to find some food. And he had come across a half eaten stale burger bun, which Timothy had eaten because he was so hungry and Shonda completely lost it. She was like, what? Timothy has eaten? How did we let this happen? Like, I'm not even being dramatic there. Like that was her actual reaction. So then Shonda messages Paul saying that he needs to shove his two fingers down Timothy's throat to make Timothy throw up the half eaten stale burger bun, which Paul did. Paul went to Timothy, put his fingers down his throat and Timothy threw up the half burger bun that he had eaten from the trash. You can't even make this kind of stuff up. How can Shonda and Paul do this? Shonda was like, that will teach him a lesson. That will teach him a lesson to not steal food again. And this next bit, oh my God, it broke me when I found out this because Timothy was so, so hungry that he somehow got into the freezer because obviously there's locks on everything, but clearly he managed to get into the freezer and Timothy ate a whole bag of frozen chicken nuggets. That is how hungry Timothy is, that he is eating frozen chicken nuggets. There was also one time as well where he ate raw hamburger meat. This poor young boy is being driven to eating raw meat. And it was discovered that he ate this raw meat and the frozen chicken nuggets. And Shonda was again so angry. So again, she forced Paul to put his fingers down Timothy's throat to make him throw up. But then there was another form of punishment that Shonda started to implement. And it soon became one of her favorite forms of punishment. And that was ice baths. Shonda literally went out and purchased a ice making machine for the sole purpose to make ice cubes to fill into a bathtub to make Timothy have ice baths. So now she had this ice machine. She would fill up the bathtub with ice cubes and cold water and she would force Timothy into the bathtub and leave him there in this frozen ice bath for hours. She would leave him there until he was literally shaking because he was that cold, probably on the verge of hypothermia. I wouldn't be surprised if there was occasions where he did have hypothermia. I mean, he's literally skin and bones. But it wasn't just like sitting in an ice bath. He also wasn't allowed to get comfortable in the bath either. Like he was not allowed to rest his arms on the side of the bath. He was not allowed to put his head back and like relax, even though how can you relax in an ice bath? But I just mean he wasn't even allowed to get comfortable because as soon as his head would start to go back to lean on the back of the bathtub, Paul or Shonda, whoever was there, would force him into an uncomfortable position to make the time in the bathtub even more excruciating. And on top of that, the other punishments are still happening as well. The sleep deprivation, the starvation, the extreme physical exercise. He was barely getting any daylight and this was having a huge effect on Timothy's body. He was struggling to even function. He was struggling to walk, to breathe, to talk. And then the final punishment that Timothy would have to endure has now unfortunately become very infamous to this case. And that is Shonda's use of hot sauce. Now, if you know anything about this case, I'm sure it is about the hot sauce. I'm sure you probably know about this. So we know that Shonda is restricting Timothy's food. However, Shonda wants to keep Timothy alive. She knows that she has to feed him something, but she still wants to punish him. She still wants to make eating a punishment. So this is when Shonda would force Timothy into eating hot sauce. And I'm not just talking about like your regular hot sauce, like sriracha or anything like that that you can just buy from a supermarket. No, 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 no. I'm not talking about that kind of hot sauce. The exact hot sauce that Shonda would use was called Elijah's Extreme Regret. 
And she had to purchase this off Amazon. I don't know if you can actually buy this in stores. The sauce is made from the two hottest chili peppers on the planet, which are the Trinidad Scorpion and the Carolina Reaper. They are the two hottest chili peppers on earth. And on the side of the bottle, the description says, quote, the pain becomes unbearable and you feel like you ate a burning hot coal. That's when you realize extreme regret. Use with extreme caution or you will regret it. And Shonda bought this hot sauce because Timothy likes spicy food. Now, apparently the whole idea to feed Timothy this spicy like hot sauce was actually Paul's idea. But to be honest, both Shonda and Paul, they're not the most honest people. So I don't even know who exactly came up with this idea. But regardless, the reason why Shonda purchased this hot sauce was to cause Timothy the most discomfort possible. So now Shonda would feed Timothy a diet of stale bread soaked in this Elijah's extreme regret hot sauce. And I mean, fully soaked. I'm not talking like just a little like dribble of hot sauce on the bread. No, 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 no. I'm talking about the bread is fully soaked in the hot sauce. Every single inch of that bread is covered in hot sauce. And Timothy was forced to eat this bread soaked in hot sauce, which he did because he was so hungry. But he was in so much pain when he ate this bread in hot sauce. I cannot even imagine the pain. Like just a tiny drop of that sauce would probably burn your entire mouth all down your throat. Can you imagine a whole piece of bread soaked in it? I don't even know how he managed to even eat one bite. But the thing is, if Timothy didn't eat the bread, he would get punished. And his punishment for not eating the bread soaked in hot sauce? Well, Paul would hold open Timothy's mouth and just pour the hot sauce down his throat, which is probably even worse than eating bread soaked in the hot sauce. So Timothy knew that if he didn't eat the bread, his punishment was going to be even worse. So he might as well eat the bread. But eating the bread, it literally just burnt his whole mouth. Like, every single nerve ending in his mouth, all down his throat. It would make him sweat profusely. And he wasn't allowed a drink of water, nothing to cool his mouth down, no, no, no. He wasn't allowed anything to make it more bearable. And if Timothy finished a whole piece of bread soaked in hot sauce, if he was a good boy, he was sometimes allowed one piece of bread not soaked in hot sauce as a reward. So again, this probably encouraged Timothy to eat the bread soaked in hot sauce because he knew he would possibly get a plain piece of bread after. And that was probably heaven in comparison to the bread soaked in hot sauce. It's just all psychological torture and games, isn't it? And I just don't know how Shonda and Paul could stand there and do this. But the treatment with the hot sauce doesn't stop there because there was one time where Shonda instructed Paul to put the hot sauce directly onto Timothy's genitals. She sent him a message saying, quote, I wonder how it would feel to have that hot sauce on your private parts. I'm not saying touch him there, not at all, but dripping a little bit there. Is that horrible? Now, thankfully, Paul actually did say no to this. This was the one thing that crossed the line for Paul. And I'm like, really? Really now? It's only just crossing the line? But thankfully, he did say no. Thankfully, Paul did stand up to his mom for once. But the fact that Shonda even suggested that, she is just pure evil. She's a monster. And things go on like this now until June of 2022 which means that Timothy has been living with this kind of treatment for the last six months. Because Adam, if you remember after his stroke, he moved out in January. And it's really hard to even picture this situation. Timothy is being completely humiliated, tortured and abused by his mom and his older brother. And you may have forgotten because it's very easy to forget, but there is another child in this house. Remember Shonda and Adam, they had another child called G. G is currently seven years old and I can't help but think, what does he know? Like, what is he being exposed to? Does he even see Timothy? Like, what is that situation? But Timothy has no one in that house, no one looking out for him, no one who has his best interests at heart. 
Timothy is completely isolated and alone. He is sleep deprived, malnourished. He is forced to kneel for hours every day, stand against the wall for hours every day, sometimes not even allowed to sleep because he's forced to stand along the wall. He is given ice baths regularly and left in these ice baths for hours, possibly suffering hypothermia. He is not allowed to move when he is in his closet because of all of the sensors. He has resorted at times to eating raw meat because he's that hungry. He doesn't wear clothes. He has to wear an adult diaper all of the time. He's barely able to use the bathroom. He has no privacy, no dignity. He has to sleep on a blue tarp. And that is when he's allowed to sleep because half the time he's not. Every single minute of every single day, Timothy is in pain. He is being humiliated, tortured. And what was Shonda's reason for doing all of this? I don't think we'll ever know, but Shonda just carried on her sick and twisted games. She must have been getting some sort of enjoyment from this. And we now get to the part of the case where things now take a tragic downward turn. Because late in June of 2022, Paul messaged his mom saying that he was concerned about Timothy and how much weight he had lost. Because he literally was skin and bones. Like, literally, like all of his bones were sticking out. His rib cage was completely like basically exposed. His collarbones were protruding and it looked painful. It basically looked like skin had been stretched over a skeleton. And Paul was worried about his brother. Like, I'm like, what? You are now worried? I'm sorry, you should have been worried months ago. He's worried that his brother is going to become seriously ill. So he messaged his mom this, saying that he was concerned. Timothy had lost too much weight. But did Shonda care? Of course she didn't. She told Paul not to worry. Everything was under control. Everything was fine. However, Paul was worried. So behind his mom's back, clearly out of sight of all of the cameras, Paul made Timothy his first proper meal in months. Paul made Timothy a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, as well as some scrambled eggs and cheese. And Timothy ate this so quickly. This was the first meal he'd had in so long. But did Timothy get any more food after that? No. I wish I could tell you that Paul has finally woken up and realized what he is doing is wrong. And now he's on his brother's side and he's going to help his brother. But that's not what happens. Paul goes straight back to being an abuser, to being his mother's enforcer. And this is why I struggle to have any sympathy for Paul. Like I said, we have to acknowledge that Paul hasn't had it easy either. But the fact that he has all of a sudden, out of the blue, started to feel guilty and has given his brother food tells you that he is aware that what he is doing is wrong. He can visibly see that his brother has lost a dramatic amount of weight, a dangerous amount of weight. He is concerned that his little brother is going to become seriously ill. So this is the moment when Paul should have changed his behavior. At the end of the day, he's 19 years old, still young, but technically an adult, and he is still old enough to know what he is doing is wrong. From this moment going forward, Paul could have snuck his brother some food on a daily basis. He did it once, why can't he do it again? He could have contacted the police. He goes to work every day. He leaves the house every day. Why didn't he tell somebody? And I'm not putting all of the blame on Paul. No, no, no. Shonda is the mastermind here. She is the epitome of evil. But I'm just saying this is why I struggle to have any sympathy for Paul because I do think Paul could have stepped in and stopped this right here and right now. Because Paul, the very next day after giving his brother that meal, goes back to abusing him torturing him. And things actually just got worse. Because Timothy was so weak, he was now barely able to walk without his legs giving way. And Paul was getting so frustrated with his younger brother that Paul actually thought that Timothy was faking it. He was faking the inability to walk and the weakness and blah, blah, blah to get sympathy. And I'm like, really? You can see him with your own eyes. You can see that he is basically just a walking skeleton. And you think he's faking it? And Paul sent his mom a message saying, quote, I'm ready to kill Timothy. He keeps acting up. I ended up dragging him back to his closet. He's still trying to be stupid, but I will tell you more tomorrow about how many different ways I can prove that he is faking. He's still doing it though. It's beyond ridiculous. And that is why I struggle to have any sympathy for Paul. 
because he literally said in that message, I'm ready to kill Timothy. We now get to the 5th of July, 2022. And this is the day where things would now take a devastating downward turn because Shonda was currently at work on this day. And Paul was the one responsible for waking up his brother at around 2 p.m. But when he went into Timothy's closet to try and wake him up, Timothy wasn't responding. Paul kept shouting at him, shaking him, but Timothy wasn't responsive. He was just lying there in the closet on the blue tar, not moving, barely breathing. So he messages Shonda asking, what should he do? And what was Shonda's answer? To put Timothy in an ice bath. Shonda instructed Paul to literally drag his brother out of the closet and put him in an ice bath. But even in the ice bath, Timothy was completely unresponsive. He was not moving, barely breathing, barely clinging on to consciousness. So then Paul messages his mom again. What should I do? He's still not responding. So this is when Shonda instructs Paul to go downstairs, go to the kitchen and heat up a pizza roll and use the pizza roll to try and get some sort of response from Timothy. Wave it in his face. Let him smell the pizza roll and maybe he'll wake up. But if he reaches for the pizza roll, you pull it away. Don't let him eat the pizza roll. We're only using it to try and wake him up. So Paul did what he was told. He went into the kitchen, he heated up a pizza roll and he took that pizza roll to Timothy. He waved it in front of his face and Timothy actually did wake up. From the smell of the pizza roll, Timothy actually responded because he was so hungry. He probably hadn't eaten a single thing for days, maybe apart from a slice of bread soaked in hot sauce. So then Timothy responded to the pizza bread, but Paul took it away. And this is why I get so frustrated with Paul because I'm like, let him eat it. So now that Shonda knew that Timothy was awake, she instructed Paul to leave him in the ice bath until she got home from work, which was four hours away. And when Shonda got home, she drove Paul to his job at Applebee's and then Shonda returned to the home and she still left Timothy in that ice bath. She eventually removed Timothy from the ice bath at 11 p.m., meaning that Timothy had been in that ice bath for nine hours. And now we get to the morning of the 6th of July, 2022. This was the day after Timothy had spent nine hours in the ice bath and tragically the worst had happened. Because on this morning, Paul again was the one to go into the little closet and wake up his little brother. But when Paul went into the closet, Timothy wasn't breathing. Paul alerts Shonda and says that Timothy is not breathing. Should he dial 911? To which Shonda said, no. Now the video of what happens next hasn't been released to the public. However, we do have the audio from what happens next. And I just can't believe that it was captured on camera because you have to remember there's cameras everywhere. And on the audio, you can hear Shonda go into the closet and she is desperately trying to wake up Timothy. Come on, buddy. Timothy. No, 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 can't, this can't happen. Timothy, hey. Don't feel anything, Paul. Okay. Don't feel anything. Okay. I think it's the one and only time I've actually heard possibly genuine emotion in her voice, even though I don't think it's emotion for Timothy. I think it's emotion for herself knowing, oh no, I've killed my son. I'm going to go to prison. She is saying, come on, Timothy, come on, wake up, wake up, baby, wake up, come on. And you can hear on the audio that she's getting more and more frantic. And this is when she tells Paul that if they are going to die on 911, they need to make Timothy look more presentable. They can't just die on 911 and the emergency services come into the house and see that Timothy is naked apart from wearing an adult diaper and he's in a closet lying on a blue tarp. Yes, you're not. You're not. You're not. 
So they drag Timothy out of the closet. They drag him down to the basement, which was Paul's room, and they place Timothy's body next to a bed. So it looks like Shonda and Paul had just taken him out of bed and placed him on the floor. They then take the adult diaper off of him and they dress him. They put jeans and a hoodie on. However, because he's literally skin and bones, the clothes are massive on him. And Paul actually puts a belt around the jeans, around the waist to make it look like they fit. Shonda also instructs Paul to perform form CPR, which Paul does. But of course, it's too late. It doesn't work. And then finally, 18 whole minutes after they found Timothy in the closet, not breathing, Shonda finally dials 911. And this is when Shonda makes up this whole story to explain why her son has mysteriously died. Because of course Shonda is not going to tell the truth, is she? So the operator on the 911 call asks what happened and Shonda is just frantically saying, oh no, 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 I don't know what happened. I just found my son. He's not breathing. He was feeling ill last night and I've been checking on him all night. And now all of a sudden I found him and he's not breathing. Oh, he has recently been on a hunger strike. Like he just won't eat lately. I woke up to go to work and my son's not breathing. I woke up to check on him before. He's 15. He's been on a hunger strike. He's, he's been, he's, when he's not eating lately. Like, like. And the operator asks, well, where is Timothy? Where is he right now? And Shonda just says, oh, he's on the floor. He was in bed, but I've just placed him on the floor, which of course is a lie because Timothy has no bed. And Shonda repeats the lie that Timothy, he just won't eat. He's gotten so skinny recently. I was about to call a doctor, but now he's not breathing. I don't know what's happened. He got really skinny and he won't eat. And I was just about to call the doctor this morning because he's just been horrible. The operator tells Shonda to perform CPR, which you can actually hear her doing it. I don't actually know if she did do it or not, but she's definitely making the noises that she is. One, two, three, four, five, six, sorry, two, three, four, five, six. And she says that a load of brown liquid is coming out of Timothy's mouth and it smells really bad. And she just keeps repeatedly banging on about this hunger strike that Timothy was on. She really wants to hammer in that story that Timothy made the decision himself to stop eating. It's not the first time he's done this, he's not eating, so, okay. And then within no time, emergency services do arrive at the home. They immediately rush to Timothy. They start to perform CPR, but it's too late. And this is when tragically 15 year old Timothy Ferguson is pronounced dead. And it just truly breaks my heart. He never stood a chance from the moment he was being born. He has been abused and neglected. And then the treatment that he endured for the last six months of his life is abhorrent. It's just despicable. I don't know how anyone can do that to anyone, let alone a child, let alone your own child. And after Timothy is pronounced dead, police are there on the scene. They take Shonda outside and you can actually see see this footage, the police were wearing body cams and oh my God, this is when Shonda tries to bring out her best acting skills. She tries to make out that she doesn't know what's happened. It's all a big accident and she's fake crying. Oh my God, it's the most dramatic thing you will ever see. <laughs> I'm Officer Stefanich. Uh, he, he's, been, he's been wearing really loose clothes the last couple of weeks. He's and really skinny. He's really skinny and I didn't notice till this morning because he wouldn't, like, I asked him if he's okay and he would not answer me. Like, he's 15. Because the police are talking to her, asking her questions and Shonda is literally sat there. She's fake crying. Her head is down. And then she will lift her head and answer the question with a normal voice. Like, there's no, like, choking or cracking in her voice. Like, her voice is completely normal. So she's literally like, oh, oh. I have two children. Two sons, they're in the house. You have another son inside the house? I have two. Yeah. Are they sleeping still right now? One of them is, yeah. The uh -oh. 20-year-old's awake. He's 20? No, the 20-year-old's awake. <laughs> and then after this little interview on the steps outside, Timothy's body is removed from the home and then unbelievably, Shonda and Paul are both left at the scene of the crime 
on their own. So this is when Shanda gets to work on trying to destroy as much evidence as she possibly can. She removes some of the cameras that are around the house. She tries to destroy the sensors. She took some of the SD cards that she had and broke them up into little pieces and scattered them on a nearby street. However, thankfully, the police had already removed some of the cameras from the scene. They already had some of the footage and the evidence. So when they returned to the property, they could tell that it looked different. Like some of the evidence had been destroyed, which was incredibly suspicious. I mean, the police were already suspecting Shonda at this point anyway, because they saw Timothy's body. Nobody looks like that. No child looks like that on their own accord. No matter how many times Shonda tries to say that Timothy was on a hunger strike, it was his decision like no 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 that is not going to convince anyone because when the police return to the scene of the crime they do a more thorough search and they find all of the locks on the kitchen cupboards on the fridge the freezer and given the fact that there was all of these locks on the kitchen and how skinny timothy was it just wasn't adding up because if Timothy was on a hunger strike, why would Shonda place locks on the cupboards? Like surely she would want her child to eat. So why would she place locks on the cupboards and prevent him from eating? They found a huge pile of used adult diapers in the bathroom, which smelt so bad. The police also found the zip ties that were used to bind Timothy's wrists. They found the small closet with a blue tarp on the floor. And in the small closet, there was urine and feces and it smelt so so bad. And they could see that the tarp had kind of been positioned as like a makeshift bed. The police actually interviewed Paul and asked him about this so-called hunger strike that Timothy was on. And Shonda tries to butt in and say, oh, did I not tell you that Timothy was on a hunger strike? And Paul was like, no, no, I don't know anything about a hunger strike. Did you know that he was in this hunger strike? I mean, did I tell you or not? I don't know if I did or not. I don't, I don't think you did. But if that wasn't bad enough, when the autopsy was carried out on Timothy's body, it was found that he was really ridiculously underweight. He only weighed 69 pounds, which is approximately 30 kilograms, which is severely underweight, especially for his age. He should have weighed nearly double that. And it was so obvious just by looking at his body, you did not need to be an expert to realize that he has suffered. He was more bones than anything. He had basically no muscle mass. His body fat percentage was zero. And he was in such a bad state that most of his ligaments had started to detach from the bone, which I didn't even think was possible. His body was literally shutting down. It was also found that he had no traces of food in his stomach, even though Shonda had claimed that he had eaten something the night prior. It was very clear that he had not had a decent amount of food for weeks. His body was covered in bruises and sores, and it is suspected that he got these bruises and sores from being dragged around the home. There is no evidence that he suffered any sort of physical abuse. Not that I'm aware of anyway, but it's obviously definitely possible. His body was also freezing cold to the touch. It was a lot colder than it should be, even though he's passed away, which only led to the conclusion that he was kept in freezing temperatures and conditions when he died. And in the end, the cause of death was a combination of malnutrition and hypothermia. And there was no way that this could have resulted from Timothy's own actions. So Shonda van der Ark was arrested for child abuse and murder. Now, Paul at this point was not arrested. He was left at home. He actually posted a video on social media talking about the fact that his brother had died and his mom was arrested. And you can see in the clip that he looks pretty uncomfortable talking about it. Hey, everybody. I uh, just figured I'd send a quick check. For those of you who aren't aware, um, my little brother has passed away and my mother is currently in the custody of well i don't i'm not sure if it's, it's i don't know it's a lot to deal with but right now we're doing good we're we're fine however soon after her arrest police confiscated shonda's phone and they soon discovered all of the text messages between shonda and Paul. And they discovered that Paul was also a participant in this abuse. So police then went and brought in Paul for questioning. And Paul tries to justify the abuse, saying that Timothy was an out of control child that he needed to be punished. We, we've tried everything. We were nice. 
week had different consequences, but he just I couldn't never listen. And Paul also admitted that he was a willing participant in this abuse. What were the what were the restrictions? We made sure that it was still something that gave him enough calories and everything. We it was rice or bread, and like I said last week, he got pizza. Okay. What were the what were they in place for like in the first place? Sneaking food over and over and over. And by the end of the interview, Paul was also arrested and charged with first degree child abuse. So police now had one job left to do, and that was figure out exactly what happened leading up to Timothy's death, or should I say murder? And it didn't take them long to figure it out because Shonda had cameras everywhere, and it was literally captured on camera. Now this footage of course has not been released to the public. However, we do have a description of what happened. So just before midnight, Shonda can be seen dragging Timothy into the closet from his ice bath. Remember, Timothy had a nine hour ice bath the day before he passed away. So Shonda can be seen dragging Timothy, putting him in the closet, and it can be seen that Timothy's eyes are open. So he is alive at this point, but barely. Even though his eyes are open, he seems completely unresponsive. He doesn't speak at all. He just makes a few moaning noises. And on the footage, it can be seen just how thin Timothy was because he was naked apart from an adult diaper. There was no hiding his bones sticking through his skin. And in the video, Shonda can be heard telling her son Timothy that he's pathetic. And Shonda also said, quote, but I already knew that. You owe me the biggest apology in the world for your behavior. And she slams the closet door shut before returning 15 minutes later. But now Timothy's breathing had become extremely short and shallow. His chest was barely rising. His mouth was open. And ugh, I haven't seen the footage, obviously, but um, from the description of his breathing, it is very, very obvious that he is dying. Like that's what his breathing was. It was short and shallow. It was raspy. It has been described as how a fish would breathe out of water. And Shonda actually says, you don't need to breathe like that. And she places her hand over his mouth and she holds his mouth shut for a long period of time. And then Shonda also says, quote, see, you didn't need to breathe like that. You're being a dummy. She then shuts Timothy alone again in the closet. And it can be seen on the video, his chest rising and falling so slowly, short, shallow breaths until his chest eventually stops moving. And this is when Timothy lost his life all alone in that closet, wearing a diaper on that blue top. And it just is really hard to even think about those final moments for Timothy because he never ever experienced love his whole life. Police had so much evidence against Shonda and now all that was left was for her to go to trial. And when Shonda was in jail awaiting trial, oh my God, did she kick up a fuss. She started complaining that she had low blood sugar, which I think she actually did suffer with low blood sugar. She actually had a service dog to like alert her about her blood and everything. And she treated the dog really well, but not her own child. And she was complaining that she needed better food in jail. She complained about stomach issues, that she couldn't keep anything down. She just kept throwing everything up. Like it just wasn't good enough. And she actually went on hunger strike herself. She actually didn't eat anything for the first 30 days that she was in jail. And I'm like, really? Like, I, I don't know much about blood sugar. You, you have to eat, don't you? Like, you do. I'm like, are we supposed to feel sorry for you? Like, this is what you did to your son. She also said that she was suffering from PTSD from her husband having a stroke and she had a stress disorder and that she had a sensory processing disorder and jail was just really traumatic for her. Like, all of the loud noises, it was like triggering to her. And I'm like, really? Really? Pot kettle black? Are you being serious? Your son had these problems problems as well. He didn't like loud noises, but what did you do? You set up an alarm to go off every time he moved. And Shonda was adamant the whole time, pleading her innocence. It was an accident. Timothy went on hunger strike, blah, blah, blah. However, Paul, he was very forthcoming. He was very honest about his participation in the abuse. He came clean about everything and he pleaded guilty to his charges. And he also agreed to testify in his mom's trial 
obviously against her. And Shonda was not expecting this. She was not expecting her son to turn against her. So then we get to December of 2023, and this is when Shonda eventually went to trial. And it generated a huge media storm because cases like this, thankfully, don't happen every day. Off the top at 11, a horrific accusation of child abuse, a mother charged with the torture and murder of her son and the trial was televised. I did watch some of the trial and the prosecution just laid out all of the evidence because there was so much, they completely tore Shonda apart. And then when Paul took the stand and gave his evidence, it was pretty damning because Paul, even though he was uncomfortable, you could visibly see that he was uncomfortable on the stand, uncomfortable talking about what he did. He was very honest. He didn't shy away from anything that he did. Having listened to that recording, do you remember what you told the detective? Um, I told him, that there was, but then I cracked and told the full, well, okay. everything. So that you, was the part that you missed. So initially you lied. Yes. Okay. I said there was a, they had, so as far as you're concerned, your brother had never been on a hunger strike. No. And I'm not gonna lie, there were times when I was watching him on the stand when I did feel sorry for him. You can see that he has suffered. And I'm not trying to make excuses for him, I'm not, because what he has done is inexcusable and unforgivable. And I do think he does feel remorse for what he did. And he even admitted on the stand that he didn't love his brother enough and he loves him more now. But there is no excusing what he did. He was an adult when he participated in the abuse and at any point, point he could have stopped this abuse. And it wasn't just Paul that gave evidence, no. Adam, the husband, now ex-husband, also took the stand to give evidence against Shonda and he was absolutely horrified about what she had done. Like he was standing in Florida recovering from a stroke. He couldn't believe what had happened at the home when he was gone. And he also testified that Shonda's relationship with her two sons, Timothy and Paul, was definitely questionable. It was very strange and Adam would always notice inappropriate touching between Shonda and her sons. She would make her sons sit on her lap for very long periods of time. She would touch them in areas that would be inappropriate. And even though there is no evidence of sexual abuse, Adam believes that there was a sexual element to all of this. And that is all we know, so your guess is as good as mine. And then Shonda took the stand in her own murder trial, which is never a good idea. But I think that just shows you how arrogant she is. She probably thought that she'd be able to get on the stand and lie her way out of this. And she tried to put on the act of, I have PTSD, like I suffer a lot with my mental health, I have stress. I can't remember anything, like my PTSD, like it, it makes me not be able to remember anything and there is no way I would do all of these horrible things to my son. Mr. Johnson asked you about the zip ties. Remember? Yes, sir. Do you ever use zip ties on Timothy? Uh, to attach the um, the personal sensor. And then I, I, I remember hearing about a conversation about them, yes, on text. I don't remember it, but I, I remember hearing about it when it was read. You remember hearing about a conversation. Did, did, that, did that make you stop and go, oh my, oh my goodness, we can't be putting Timothy in, in zip ties? Yes, I mean, that's what I thought here. Yes, yeah. sir. Sure, okay. And her emotion, it was either just nothing, it was like a cold dead stare, or her emotion was fake, like fake crying. There was even one time where she faked throwing up. I'm not joking. The prosecution showed her images of Timothy when he had died and she turned and faked throwing up. She like got a plastic bin off the floor and she started going, oh, oh, and it was very, very clear that it was fake. This is hours before he dies, right? Yes, sir. You look like that when you put him in the bathtub? Sorry, Gotta make the Mr. Vanderhoek, do we have a trash can? I did, I placed a trash can. You did? Yeah, I see. Would you like the jury to remove? All right, please rise. There is nothing in this world that could convince me that she was actually throwing up. She also tried to say that Timothy, he was on a hunger strike, it was his own decision, and then she tried to explain the hot sauce, and she actually said that Timothy likes spicy food, so she got the hot sauce because 
he liked spicy food. And then when she was asked if she had ever tried the hot sauce herself, Shonda went, no, 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 I don't like spicy food. I have a very weak stomach. The hottest thing I can handle are flaming hot Cheetos. I've never wanted to punch someone more in my life. And something that does make me laugh, it does make me chuckle, it does, is that the courthouse that her trial was at was the same courthouse that Shonda used to work at. Um, so you, when you worked here, it was not a paid internship. You were working in Nuevo for paid internship at that time. Is that correct? For a paid clerkship, yes, sir. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how full circle is that? And to no surprise, after all of the evidence was presented, the jury came back very quickly and found Shonda van der Ark guilty on all charges. And then the sentencing took place in January of 2024 and Shonda received life in prison without the possibility of parole. And then Paul also had to be sentenced and he was sentenced to a minimum of 30 years and a maximum of 100 years. And that was the case of Shonda van der Ark. You're angry, aren't you? Yeah, I am too. I told you your blood would boil at this case. It's just one of those cases where I'm like, wow, that escalated quickly. Shonda went from zero to 100 pretty much instantly. As soon as Adam moved out of that home and went to Florida to recover from his stroke, Shonda wasted no time in abusing and torturing her son. And I just don't understand like why, like obviously there is no explanation for child abuse, but I can't help but think that because of Timothy's disabilities and his conditions, it made him more vulnerable. And I think it made him an easier target for Shonda. He couldn't fight back as easily. He couldn't talk back as easily. He was also off the grid. She wasn't legally allowed to be his guardian. So Timothy was almost the perfect victim for her because he was completely off grid. He didn't exist. And I think that is the only explanation as to why Timothy was abused and tortured so much because she could get away with it. At least she thought she could get away with it. With her other son, Paul, he was obviously a lot older. He may have been able to overpower her. He also left the house every day, went to work. He wasn't as easy to control. And then the youngest son, G, he was only about seven years old when this was all happening. I assume he was in school. So she wouldn't have been able to easily abuse him without anyone noticing. Because remember, she abused her children before and they were taken off of her and she didn't want to risk that again. So that is why I think she chose Timothy. And then when it comes to Paul, there is a lot of debate about how much responsibility he has, because you have to acknowledge that he had a terrible childhood. He was also abused by his parents. And there is a power imbalance there. Shonda is the parent. She's the mom. She obviously has some power and influence over her child, Paul, even though he's an adult. Paul, even though he is responsible, he is not as responsible as Shonda. However, Paul, he has admitted that he was a willing participant. And I believe that he was. At any moment, he could have helped his brother out. He could have snuck him some food here and there, but he didn't. He only did it that one time. And Paul's excuse is is that he has said that he had Stockholm Syndrome. He's never been diagnosed with that as far as I'm aware, but that is what he has said and that he was searching for approval from a parent, which may have been the case. I'm not saying that that's not true, but that's not good enough. That's not an excuse to abuse and torture your younger brother. No, 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 no. But I want to end this video remembering the victim of today's case, Timothy Ferguson. Timothy Ferguson was described as a sweet, kind and caring young boy. Teachers described him as being compassionate, always willing to help others. And more than anything in this world, he just craved the love and attention that he so rightly deserved. He was taken far, far too soon from this world. He was only 15 years old. And that brings us to the end of today's heartbreaking case. As always, let me know your thoughts, theories, and opinions. And don't forget to leave me your case suggestions in the comments down below, because I always want to know what you want to hear next. Thank you again to Audible for sponsoring today's video, and I'll see you all in my next one. Bye.